Father. Prorogation, the formal name given to the period between the end of one session of Parliament and the state opening that begins the next. Not to be confused with the dissolving of Parliament, which happens before a general election. Order. The power to prorogue Parliament belongs to the monarch, but they act only on the advice of the executive. In this case, that's Boris Johnson's government. Prorogation is absolutely legal. It's usually a standard part of the parliamentary calendar, coming just days before the state reopening. What's arguably different about this is why it's being used and for how long. If you look back over the last 40 years, the longest prorogations that we've had, which have generally been to take account of public holidays and things, have been three weeks. And Boris Johnson is asking for four to five weeks. So that is very unusual. On top of that, we are in the middle of a political crisis with the Brexit clock ticking down to the 31st of October and we're shutting down Parliament from scrutinising the government for that period of time. That's pretty extraordinary. In the mother of parliaments, this isn't the first time prorogation has been used controversially. In 1628, King Charles I sought to stamp his authority on a parliament intent on curtailing his power. He would rule without them for 11 years, setting in motion a conflict culminating in the English Civil War and the loss of his head. In the post-war era, Clement Attlee's Labour government suspended Parliament in 1948 as it sought to limit the power of the House of Lords to delay its legislation. In a Privy Council determining prorogation, I've no intention of changing that. And in March of 1997, John Major's government prorogued Parliament at a time which prevented debate of the Cash for Questions scandal involving two Conservative MPs. But in this case, Parliament was then dissolved 19 days later, as is more usual, ahead of a general election in which Tony Blair became Prime Minister. Coming back to the present, Parliament returns on Tuesday, with perhaps as few as four days before it's suspended. So what could still be achieved by MPs in the time available? First, the people who want to avoid no deal have to ask the Speaker to allow them to have an emergency debate. They have to use the emergency debate to seize control of the agenda in, in the Commons. They then have to use that control of the agenda to introduce and pass legislation. It has to go through all the stages in the House of Commons and then all the stages in the House of Lords before receiving royal assent, all before the House is prorogued. If any bill that had been introduced to prevent no deal wasn't complete by the time the House was prorogued, they'd have to start again, all over again, in October. A vote of no confidence is another possibility. If the government loses, conventionally the opposition would have 14 days to try and form a government. If the ha House hasn't voted confidence in a new government by the time that prorogation happens, then the 14-day period just expires while the House is prorogued and then you go anyway into an election which the incumbent Prime Minister chooses the date, So actually cetera. they don't, they wouldn't have the usual 14 they days? They wouldn't have the full 14 days, no. Another way prorogation could be challenged is in the courts. It could be argued that the advice given to the Queen by her government was unconstitutional. But the success of any such challenge would be far from certain. It's not necessarily illegal, but we don't have a legal constitution in the UK. We have famously a political constitution. That requires key players in politics to respect precedents and tradition, and the precedents are absolutely against what is happening now. And yet it is happening. In all scenarios, time is a factor, but fundamentally, under our system, the government is in the driving seat. Elizabeth Glinka, well, one of the people trying to stop a no-deal Brexit through the courts is the SNP MP and QC Joanna Cherry. She spoke to Newsnight about her plans. As soon as I got wind of what was going to happen early this morning, I had a conference with our legal team, conference call with our legal team, and instructed them to file a motion at the Court of Session in Edinburgh looking for an urgent interim hearing to review the legality of what has happened today. And we are caught, we've asked for that urgent hearing at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. We don't know at the moment whether or not we'll get it at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, but we're confident that we're going to get it before uh, the end of the week. So if we don't get it tomorrow, we'll get it on Friday.
As lawyers, we are always cautious, but we think we have reasonable prospects of success here. Um, the British government are blowing hard about how they've got the legal position all tied down. But of course, I was involved in the previous case about the unilateral revocation of Article 50. They said the same in that case, and we ultimately fought them all the way to the Court of Justice in Luxembourg and won there. Likewise, Gina Miller's case, the British government were adamant they had their legal position tied down, and Gina Miller successfully fought the case and beat them in the Supreme Court. So the mere fact that the government lawyers are saying that they think they've got a good case it hasn't been borne out by previous experience. And there's established precedent from the Supreme Court from 2015 in a case concerning the Barclay brothers that the exercise of the prerogative power is open to review by the court. The SNP's Joanna Cherry well with me now is the former Supreme Court Justice, Jonathan Sumption. Uh, good evening, Jonathan Sumption. Good evening. Uh, before we talk about uh, the legality or otherwise, what do you make of Boris Johnson's move? Well, it is politically shocking in a parliamentary democracy. Whether it is illegal or unconstitutional is a completely different question. Did the Queen have any choice when Boris Johnson asked her for permission to prorogue Parliament? No, she didn't. The Queen has no source of advice independent of the government, she is bound to take the government's advice. Um, I, the, the basis of that is that the government commands a majority in the House of Commons. Mm -hmm. What is extraordinary about the present situation is that the Queen's prerogative is being used by a government which does not have a majority in the House of Commons for its flagship policy. So, basically, Boris Johnson is using prorogation as a tool to shut down democracy. Well, that's putting it rather starkly. But let's move on then to actually talk about what Joanna Cherry was saying, that they're, they're trying to go through this in the Scottish courts, then they will go all the way to the Supreme Court. In your view, does she have a case? I think that it's a very, very long shot. This is such an unusual situation that nobody can stand here and say what the answer is definitely going to be. But there are huge difficulties in the way of an application like that. In the Gina Miller case, the Supreme Court held that political conventions are not justiciable in the courts. There, our constitution is based partly on legal rules and partly on conventions. Mm -hmm. The relations between the Crown and Parliament are governed by convention. And conventions are rules of practice. They are based on political sentiment and on the basis that they are binding only in the sense that it would be politically costly to disregard them. Right. In your view, in your view, sorry, sorry, Jonathan Sumption, in your view, is what Boris Johnson did lawful? Yes. So on I'm that sure basis, so. then, it's the, you would say it's the million to one shot. Uh, because if he did, if what he did was lawful, then it's unlikely, in your view, that the Supreme Court would uphold objection. Is that your view? I think it is unlikely that they're going to do that for the simple reason that um, what is wrong with this decision is not that it's beyond the powers of the government, but that it is being done but for a mistaken political motive. Okay. I think it is impossible to suggest that the exercise of prerogative powers by ministers uh, cannot be motivated by political considerations. Mm -hmm. But there are good political considerations and bad ones. The courts are not there to decide uh, what are good political reasons and what are bad political so reasons. If They're you were, there to decide what's lawful. Yes, but if you were uh, in the business of uh, uh, advising MPs who do not want to know deal Brexit, what do you think uh, they need to do now? They've got two choices. They can try uh, to introduce emergency legislation. Uh, that, there's very little time to do that, but it is, I suspect, just about possible. Or they can bring the government down. Thank you very much indeed, Jonathan Sumption.